Hey guys, Curious Hobbies here. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to modify a macOS game, Cooking Dash 3 Thrills and Spills. This app is 32 bit, and on top of that, the game has the following issues. So that's why I'm modifying it today. At first, it simply won't play. If you try to open it, it only runs a black screen, and after some time, it just quits. However, I did find a way to solve this problem. Right click the app and select Show Package Contents. Then open the Contents folder, then open the macOS folder. Now, open the file in that folder. This shows a terminal window and then opens the app. And this time, it runs fine in this weird window. Strange. Also, this game's window is about 4.3. In this recording though, the window is stretched to 16.9. I swear it was letterbox 4.3 on the screen. I did take a screenshot with the game running, and those images were not stretched. In fact, they were 1024 by 768, different than most displays like this 4K screen. My display is also 16.9, so normally, full screen captures are 3840 by 2160. It seems the game runs in some kind of strange display mode. However, you can't start a screen recording with the game in full screen. So, the video remains 16.9, and it keeps its pixel ratio, which causes stretching, as initially, the video is not 4.3 or 1024 by 768 whereas this game's full screen display mode is. Anyways, because of that, I did want to save recording size. So, I tried to put the game in windowed mode. Fortunately, the game's options do have an option for that. However, once I tried to select it, the game turned black, the music stopped, and finally, the game quit. Anyways, for now, let's get back to the app. There's also a resources folder, and in that, there's an assets folder. Inside of that, there's three more folders. In the credits folder, there's a text file. It's only one file though. It could have been inside of its parent folder, and it wouldn't be any less organized. This has the game's credits, the same credits you're able to read in the game's options menu. This contains development staff, and interestingly, developers of Playground SDK which apparently, the game was made with. What is Playground SDK? Category, Games Built with Playground SDK, which by the way, is PlayFirst's game engine. According to Wikipedia, those games are as follows. I'm not seeing this game in here, or the older games. We did have an iPad version of Cooking Dash 1. However, this game is from the Mac App Store, so that might also be PlayFirst. So we have at least one PlayFirst game that isn't listed here. Interesting and seemingly lucky coincidence. And it's not like this is a recent game. Speaking of that, they may not have built a 64-bit version of Playground SDK. One reason why 32-bit apps continue being built, even after 64-bit apps become at least partially used. Game engines not updating, or in this case, the company not updating their engine. When they first built it, were 64-bit apps the thing? If so, they may have used older computers or operating systems. Anyways, let's move on. There's also a main menu folder, which again, there's only one file inside. That seems weird, and not necessary. An image used for this game's title screen. No difference, right? There's also an empty folder called Splash. Is the folder used for anything? If not, it shouldn't be there. So, the image is the only file that can be accessed through the app's folders. So where's all the other data? We'll get to that. For now though, let's open the image in Paint Pro. Maybe I should modify it to show you what that does. So I want to try removing the roller coaster. First, I'm going to use the eraser tool to remove the tracks 3 loop. Why do I do this exactly? The app name and top bar does not have it. So this makes that match, and I don't want the roller coaster. Nor do I have the font they used, or a way to outline the character like they did. Anyways, in the process, I did remove a slight bit of the outline on the H in dash. Luckily, this part is straight. So first I made a line, and made sure the edges were set to smooth. See these pixels that aren't the main line color, 
and also have some transparency. This effect is anti-aliasing, which blends nearby pixels together, giving it a sort of blur, but also decreasing the jagged pixel edges. I set the width and angle, and aligned it with the edge. Also, the other end of the roller coaster is just below the outline of Thrills and Spills. That will be a challenge. However, I'm easily able to get to this part, so let's do that now. Okay, I'm going to try the fill tool to clear these gray parts with transparent color. I can choose the tolerance by dragging outward. One useful feature in Paint Pro. This means it fills in farther away colors from the pixel you clicked on the farther out you drag. However, this is a tricky choice. You can see some gray pixels on the edge of the outline. That's because the anti-aliasing alludes to the gray shade on the roller coaster. I can drag it out more, but that might damage it, sharpening the pixels and making it look more jagged. It could also get thinner. Once I picked a poison point, I filled them back with dark gray, as well as the outer part, and no outward tolerance. Wait, why? How does that make sense? Well, there is an interactive layering system. So not only can you undo and redo changes, you can delete, hide, or lock individual layers, or move them over others. Now, I'm going to use the eraser to clear away the edge. As you can see, the background canvas is pretty light, and I don't want the white edge blending in with it. You can use a solid color background in place of the checkerboard canvas by holding down the command key and hitting comma. But I wasn't thinking about that, and I can delete the fill layers, and everything's back to normal. Alright, let's get the rest of the coaster. Firstly, this part is over this part of the D in dash. My question, why only this part? Maybe to make it look somewhat 3D. Luckily, this part is straight, so at first, it seems pretty simple to restore. Make two black lines, adjust the width and angle, and then align them with the edge. However, the main part is going to be a challenge to recreate. Problem is, the top of the letters is light yellow, but then it becomes darker orange the lower down you go. That's because they interpolated between those two colors to make a gradient. The line tool does not have a gradient option. However, the rectangle tool does. It also has handles for width and height. How do I get the angle though? Rotate it like this. About 12 degrees seems fine. Also, I'll be setting the fill mode to gradient, the gradient mode to linear, and point the handle to this direction. There's also an eyedropper tool to sample a color from one pixel. I'll be grabbing a yellow color from about here. I'll also do a brown color from this spot, the closest part of the D past the coaster. I then stored the colors in favorites. I'm so lucky this isn't curved. I mean, where else can you do this? Anyways, I set the gradient's color points to the favorites. However, the dark spot still looks strange. That's because I picked a shaded spot. The shadow was from the coaster, and I don't want a trace of it showing up here. What was I thinking? Next, I dragged the end past the shadow and lightened up the color. Now it looks amazingly like nothing was over here. There's still a faint color jump here though. However, moving the end upward did fix it. There, they never added the roller coaster. Okay, all that's left is pretty much using the pencil and eraser tools to hide the rest of it. After that, I'm now ready to open the game again. This was kind of overkill. I could have done something a bit simpler. This isn't about image editing. However, it is interesting. Now, let's open the game. Here's what the title screen looks like. I have to say, this could have passed as the original. I mean, there's already an animated roller coaster in the scene, and no 3 in the application name. What? So, let's get back to windowed mode. Unticking the ellipse quits the app. However, I did try to play the game and finish the level. Once done, the game softlocked. Later, I did figure out why. The game contains a multiplayer profile interface. I did see something in the title screen. The game tries to welcome you by displaying the following. Welcome, comma, 
and then the player name you created. That wasn't showing here though. So, then I made a profile, and then tried yet again to set the game to windowed. Once again, the app quit. And so, I launched the game again, and was close to giving up. Only to realize after I opened it, it was in windowed mode. Very strange glitch. Shouldn't the game force you to make a profile? Well, maybe it's supposed to. After all, it's not a new app. And, it's also made with Playground SDK, a game engine specific to Play First Incorporated. Anyways, all of the game's other data is located in this file. The largest of any in the game, this is a PFP file. Likely, some kind of compressed package of data files and folders. However, what is a PFP file? Apparently, it can be opened with these programs. However, none of these seem to have to do with data compression, or maybe copying protection? Again, this is a package of different types of files, including audio, images, and game scripting, and likely specific to play first. The most popular notion seems to be a program called Panoramic Factory, which in this case is what PFP stands for. However, Panoramic Imaging? Uh, probably not. Again, not likely what this file is for. Again though, it's most likely proprietary, so it could stand for Play First Playground? Playground SDK? Probably the best guess. Anyways, I then tried opening it in text edit. Once I did that, I then saw what seemed to be some folder paths that pointed to data in the PFP file, each one ending with a file name and then a file extension. For instance, .ogg recurs a lot here. OGG is an HTML5 audio format. This is the beginning of an OGG file. I then scrolled down to try to find the end. At this rate, I didn't see anything in all of these pseudo-random characters. This gets quite boring pretty quickly. Eventually, I lost interest in finding something, and started scrolling down even faster. At this point, if I reach the end, it's still kind of interesting. However, I did find something eventually. The text became more legible. Okay, let's go back up a bit. And it's less legible again. There's the separation between the types of data. What file is this the end of? I started going up, and then found a significant spacing. Then I saw a small line that read, APNG. So, this could be the starting point of a PNG image. Now, let's open a normal PNG file and text edit. This has the same beginning, and the same ending of I-E-N-D-A-E-B-C. The C is the last character. Knowing this, now I'm going to drag select all the PNG file, ending exactly at the end, and taking into account the other one we looked at. Then, I'll paste it into a file to turn it into an image. Here's how. Go to the left side of your menu bar atop your screen. Now select File, New Document. However, this will be a rich text file. Every file consists of plain text, even if they open in text edit as rich text which can store styles, fonts, and text sizes. So, how do you fix this? Go back to the menu bar, then select Format, Make Plain. Now, you're ready to paste in all the data. Then you'll need to save this. So close the window, and then you'll have to choose the encode format. Long story short, neither of these options work. However, this one does. Then confirm, and this will happen. Here's an image of Florence, the salad chef in the game. Now, let's edit it. I'm going to make a change that I'll likely notice, blanking out all the facial detail. Interestingly, there's 8 frames here. The game must be using it as an animation, to generate what seems to be a facial movement. Anyways, once I was done, I saved it and opened it in text edit. I then selected all of it by holding down the command key and pressing A. I copied it, and now I'm going to cut the source image from the PFP file and paste in the new image. Then I started the game. However, it didn't really work. At all, unfortunately. The data size of this image was greater than the source after the edits, even though the facial expressions were removed. And now, 
those sections are solid. Ideally, this would cause a decrease because it's less detail. Maybe the game depends on the byte level accuracy of the file size. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If so, feel free to like it, share it with family and friends, and sub to my channel for more content. If you want to get notifications on new uploads, click on the bell icon after subscribing. I typically try to upload new videos on Saturdays or Sundays. Also, you can check out my channel. To do that, click on my icon or channel name just below the video. For any questions or requests you have, you can let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching.